Good evening, good evening, family. This is the day that the Lord has made. I rejoice in it. Let us rejoice and be glad, uh, believing in Him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. You are God even this hour. We bless you and give you the praise and all the adoration in the name of Jesus. Your word is a lamp unto our feet. Oh, Father, it is a a lamp unto our feet, oh God, it is light unto our path. Father, lead us. Your word is alive and active. It is quick and powerful. We pray in the name of Jesus for your grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, children of God, this is the day that the Lord has made. We are going to share the word of God. Mm, the word of God. Today I want us to, to talk about the glory of God. The glory of God. When we talk about the word glory, it talks about many things. But when we talk about the glory of God, we are talking about the things that made God, that makes God to be God. That uh, shows us his supremacy, his power. Uh, it, it, the glory of God reveals his strength. The glory of God uh, shows us the, his uniqueness, huh? his sovereignty. That is the glory of God. So I want us to, to talk about the glory of God in these last days. In these last days. We are living in the end times. These are the last days. But now, there is a dimension of the glory of God that... Uh, Per, 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 per uh, dispensation of time, God operates in, in dimensions of His glory. That's why the Bible talks about the former glory and the present glory, because uh, there is a glory that was and the glory that is and the glory that is still to come. So, so in other words, as times pass by, as seasons pass by, we 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 experience the glory of God uh, uh, per dimension, per uh, per level. You see, mostly in the things of God, the glory goes by uh, the, the more we know of Him, uh, this, the more we see of Him, the more we get uh, intimacy with Him, the more we come closer to Him, the more we see His glory. That's why one, one worshiper one said, sang a song and said, the closer I am, the more I see the glory of the soon coming King. Okay. Listen to this. We are going to read in the book uh, of Hagar. Hagai, Hagai, Hagai. Uh, let's read chapter 1. Talking about the glory of God. The glory of God. Mm. Hagai chapter 1 verse 6. It says, This is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth. The sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations and what is desired by all nations will come. And what is desired by all nations will come when God shakes what? The heavens and the earth. Hmm. All right. And what is this? Okay. He says, and I will fill this house with my glory, says the almighty God. He says, I will fill this house with my glory. I will fill this house with my glory. Says the Lord Almighty. Verse number 8. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this present will be greater than the glory of the former, former house. Says the Lord God Almighty. And in this place I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. So, God speaks about his glory. We hear him talking about his glory. So, God is saying us that the, the glory of him, when he shakes the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry ground, he says, uh, 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 and what is desired by nations will come. So, in other words, where the glory of God is, there is fulfillment. Where the glory of God is, there is purpose. Where the glory of God is, uh, there is a fulfillment of his purpose, of his mandate. Hmm? He answers, he rejoices in helping his people, empowering his people, uh, advancing his people. But when the glory of God comes, 
God says, I will shake the heavens and the earth once more again. I will shake them. He says, the, 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 the later glory, the latter glory will, will be greater than the former glory. So there was a dimension of glory in the, when you go read the book of, of uh, the, the life of Solomon, King Solomon. King Solomon is one, uh, one of the king who experienced the glory of God. When he made sacrifice before God, the Bible says the glory of God filled the temple physically. So in the Old Testament, the glory of God we, uh, is revealed mostly in the physical form. They used to see the glory physically. They will see the fire of God physically. They will see anything that God is doing physically. It will appear physically that all men will witness that this is the glory of God. You still remember when, they, when Moses went to the mountain, Mount Sinai, uh, spent 40 days and 40 nights with God on the mountain. When he came down, they could not behold him because he was filled with the glory. He was full of light, which was the glory of God. It was a physical glory. So anyone can, can say in the point that is the glory of God. Those are the days when Moses lived. These are the days of the Old Testament. That is the glory of God. So, whenever the glory of God came down, it was to reveal him. God, God had a mandate to fulfill this. He will reveal his strength. He will show himself strong and mighty by revealing his glory. So, his glory was there to witness, to, 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 to serve as a symbol to his presence. Uh, uh, it was a symbol uh, to, for him answering prayers, showing himself that he is in the affairs of men. That is the former glory. But now, we are in the latter glory. We are living in the latter glory. This glory, it's not, a, it does, it's not a matter of being physical. But this glory, it's so powerful. So powerful that it lives within us. The, this glory is so powerful that it makes all things possible. The glory of God. Remember that Jesus, when he prayed, uh, 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 on, 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 on the mountain when he prayed about the glory let's hear what he said uh, the John 17 okay listen to this John chapter 17 from uh, from let's read from verse one. It says, after after Jesus said this, he looked towards heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you, for you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this eternal life, that they know you, the only true God. And Jesus Christ, whom you have sent, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. You see, Jesus now is talking about the glory. He says, I have given you glory. So now, glory is revealed when the purpose of God is fulfilled. Glory is revealed when, the, when, when, when we are doing the things that God designed us to do. When we are living according to his purpose, the glory of God is revealed. You understand? Listen again what he said. He says, now, he says, now, this eternal life that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work that you have sent me. That is glory. And, you, and now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. He says, now glorify me with the glory I had with you before the world began. It's a prayer. It's a prayer. Jesus is praying to God. He says, glorify me with the glory that that I had before the world, I had with you, before the world began. Remember, when we read the book of, is it Philippians? When it talks about Jesus Christ, it says he humbled himself even unto death. 
even death on the cross. Eh? And God exalted him. Eh? Why? How did he exalt him? He glorified him. He glorified him. He glorified him. He raised, he gave him the glory. He glorified him. That's why he says, glorify me with the glory I had with you before the world began. So, Jesus Christ, remember, when we talk about Jesus, we are talking about what uh, Prophet Isaiah spoke about. He said, uh, he said, a, a, a son, he said, a, a, a baby is born unto us, eh? and a son is given. So, a baby was born, but a son was given. So, where did he come from? From above. And he who comes from above is from above. So, today as we talk about the glory of God, I want you to understand that the glory of God is fulfilled. The glory of God is already existing. But we also give him glory. When we fulfill his purpose, God receives glory. Every time his purpose and his, his word gets fulfilled, God receives glory. He rejoices. When they say someone glory, I glory in this, it means I delight. So the glory of God is God's delight. It's the things that God delights in. It's the God, things that God loves. So when we do what we love, we give him glory. So God created things that he loved. Such of the angels. The angels are the glory of God. We talk about the angels. We talk about the grace of God. It is the glory of God. We talk about wisdom. It is the, so the glory of God is, what, is the things in which God delights in. It, 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 it is the, the manifestation of the wisdom of God and the supremacy of God. The glory of God also comes when we, when we, we fulfill His purpose, when we, we make uh, His way to come alive, when we become what He wants us to become. That's the glory of God. That is the glory of God. So now, who is this Jesus? How is he continuing the glory of God? Because he says here, yeah, when listen to his prayer, he says, I have given you glory by fulfilling. Huh? By fulfilling what? He says, I gave you glory. Let's read it again. He says, I have brought you glory I, on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. He says, I have given you glory. I have brought you glory. So I have made you rejoice. I have made you... Uh, 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 I have made you known. So, Jesus Christ came to manifest the glory of God. He was the purpose of the glory of God. So God gloried in giving him. For him to die for us. So he was fulfilling the purpose of God. By him bringing the salvation, the good news, it was fulfillment of the glory of God. Remember, what we see is written in scriptures. So if it's in scriptures, it means now, every time we, 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 we fulfill the scripture, the glory of God gets revealed. The power of God gets revealed. The wisdom of God gets revealed. So, this glory, this glory of these later times is greater than the former glory. So, me and you, we are living in the dimension of glory that is superior, higher, higher glory. We are living in uh, a dimension of glory which is higher. Reading uh, it is the book of Hebrew. The chapter 12 verse 44 if I'm correct, I'm correct it says for our patients these are our elders uh, Abraham uh, 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 Moses Elijah all those Jacob they lived in their times but the Bible says they were not perfected till God saw something better that together they and us may be perfected so the, 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 former, the former glory and the later glory Actually, the, the, the former ministry, testament, will, could not be perfected till, uh, till this testament of us, we the manifest sons of God, we who carry the purposes of God, we who live hmm, Christ in us. Huh? 
the hope of God. Remember, remember, in the Old Testament, the presence of God was what is, was continued, what we called the Ark of the Covenant. It was an act of, you know, it symbolized the, the, the presence of God. The Ark of the Covenant, where there was there was the, the ten uh, the, 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 the commandments, the tablets of the commandment. There was a manna. There, there was the thing that symbolized the covenant that God made with them, because it was a covenant. It was a covenant that God made with them. That's why when Jesus came in, he said, "Now this is the blood." When when, when he was sitting with his disciples on the table, he said, "This is the blood of the new covenant." I mean, there is the older covenant. This is the blood of the new covenant. Huh? Of the remission of sins of many, of the forgiveness of sins. So, in other words, it, though he, Jesus brought a new covenant, is the minister of a new covenant. This covenant has a higher glory. It is a covenant you don't have to see with your naked eyes, but you can see the manifestation thereof. So, when the man is filled with the power of God, when the glory of God is upon a man, we see the dimensions, we see his operation. He becomes unusual. He becomes supernatural. So, where the glory of God is, we, we enter the supernatural. So, you, you, you surpass the natural. Things that happen within you, your ministry, your lifestyle, you experience things that are supernatural. What is supernatural means? Supernatural means is when now you are beyond the natural world. So in other words, spiritual manifestations express themselves in you, in a physical form, but they are spiritual in context. But they come to you, they become tangible. So it's bringing the spiritual world into the physical, manifesting, manifesting it in a higher dimension. So when a man's flow is anointed, we don't have to see a smoke uh, uh, around him. Physically, we, we, we see yeah, by the dimensions, by the, uh, by, by the manifestations of the glory of God. That's why the Bible says, uh, for creation was groaning in expectation for the manifest sons of God. Who are these? These who are the ones who fulfill the purpose of God. The ones who bring glory to God. Their lives are for the glory of God. So, we are living as ministers of the new covenant, of the new testament. Yeah? With the high dimensions of glory. Because this glory we have is greater than the former glory. We are not there in the days of Moses. You are not there in the days of Elijah. But we are here in the days of Jesus Christ. In the days of Apostle Paul. In the days of Apostle Peter. The tough apostles. The, 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 the gospel they brought. The good news. The good news. And if you can take note, you will notice, child of God, that really this... This latter glory is greater than the older glory, than the former glory. Why am I saying this? Let's go back to the Old Testament. When Jesus Christ was now uh, uh, showing the difference between the, the former uh, covenant or the former glory and the present glory. In the new glory, we hear something new. Listen to this. John chapter 1. That's what uh, 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 de defines the new glory. Listen to this. This is John chapter 1. We are going to read. Now, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through Him all things were made. Okay, let's, let, 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 let. now we understand we are talking about Jesus. Né? But I want us to go down here and listen to this. Hmm. Yeah, verse number 15 says, For John testified concerning him, he cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. Hmm? Out of his fullness we have received grace in the place of grace given. For the law was given through Moses, but grace was given. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So, now, the law came through Moses. That was the new old covenant. But in the New Testament, we see now, grace and truth. So, this covenant, uh, this former glory comes with what? With the new. It comes with the glory. It comes with the glory. With the grace and truth. Grace and truth. Grace and truth. 
comes with the glory of the latter days. So, Jesus came full of glory and truth. Full of grace and truth, I mean. Grace and truth. And the Bible says, out of his fullness we have received grace upon grace already been given to us. So what does it mean now? Because he glorified, when he died for us, it was for the glory. We were graced by God. But he came now to fulfill. So when we receive him, we receive another, we, don't, we, we, leave, we, we, see, we receive more grace. More grace. That's why the Bible says we, are, we have to grow. And it's the book of, this, of uh, Colossians says we have to grow in the grace and the knowledge of God. So we grow in the grace. We grow in the grace and the knowledge of God. Mm. We grow in the grace and the knowledge of God. Listen to this. So Jesus Christ is a fulfillment. He came to bring the glory, to fulfill the glory of God. To bring glory to God by what? By fulfilling his purpose. There's a scripture I love the most here. Listen to this. Please finish. Please join. John, 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 John. First John, this is first John. That which was from this John chapter one, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen. With our eyes, which we have looked and at our and at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testify to it, and we proclaim to you eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and yet so that you also may have fellowship with us and our fellowship is with the with the father and with his son jesus christ we write this to make our joy complete mm. Mm. you hear that this we write to make our, our joy complete So you hear this. So that's why the Bible declares that uh, uh, in the certain times God spoke us through to the prophet, but in this later time he speak us to his he speak to us through his son Jesus Christ. So Christ is a fulfillment of the grace. We need the grace of God. We need to minister grace to one another. The Bible says, minister grace to one another. Where there is grace, there is love. Where there is grace, there is healing. Where there is grace, there is deliverance. Where there is grace, there is forgiveness. Where there is grace, all things are possible. So, we live in the dimension of grace. We minister grace to one another. We show grace to one another. So, we show love. Because Jesus Christ spoke this way. Remember, he said, if you love one another, if you love one another, as I have loved you, this world will know that you belong to me. That's how we reveal the glory of God. That's why Jesus, when he prays, John chapter 17, you hear what he said? He said, yes, I have put you glory by fulfilling eh, the assignment which you have sent me. So I have brought you glory. Therefore, glorify me. Abraham, Adam and Eve, they were coated with the glory of God in the garden. They were God with the glory of God. That's why they never noticed any nakedness. They never naked, they noticed anything. They were covered for the garment, which is the glory of God. So, this means that is why, as soon as the devil brought sin, introduced sin, or sooner was introduced into them, the glory of God left them. Then they noticed that they are naked. Remember, God said to Abra, to Adam, to, to, uh, to Adam, he must name all the animals. So it means, as supernatural as the man was, he could walk inside the water, he 
could walk in water and would never, never drown. Why? Because he was living in the glory. So the glory of God allowed him to live with the animals. They could not harm him. They could not do anything to him. Why? Because of he was full of the glory. The glory of God is always upon him. As soon as the sin was introduced, that's why he lost the glory. That's why the devil said, you will not surely die. So he knew that there is a dimension that will leave them. So, child of God, we are living in the latter glory. Let's arise. 2023, let's arise. Let us shine. Let us shine. Ah, I, I, I hear Isaiah saying, arise and shine. For your light has come. And the glory of God has risen upon you. The glory of God has risen upon you. So it's time to rise and shine again. It's time to rise and take your stand again. Mm. Rise. Take your stand. Oh, refuse to be discouraged. Refuse to be discouraged. Rise and shine. Oh, may the love of God rest upon us. Oh, may he help us. Oh, with the help of the Holy Spirit, the wonderful counselor. Oh, the one, the, our advocate, our standby. The one who teaches us all things. Oh, with the help of the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth. Ah, may God help us to come to understand his glory. That we may discover, oh, what we have called for, what we are called for. That we, we may discover our purpose, that it is for the glory of God that we should live. It is the glory of God when we live fruitful lives, hmm? victorious lives. It is the glory of God. Jesus has brought us victory, victory over everything. So let us rise and let us shine. Let us rise and shine again. Oh, 2023, it is my prayer that we see more of God. That we walk in higher dimensions. That we see the beauty of God in our lives. That we walk in the fulfillment of the power of God. That we see Him more. That we know Him more. Uh, I pray that 2023, it must be a year for me and you to come closer to God. Closer than before. Uh, Listen here, if you feel that it's too hard, you can't walk, crawl to him. Crawl. Refuse to die here. Ah, don't die here. Ah, crawl. Press on. Press on. Ah. Paul says, I haven't fulfilled. I'm not perfect yet, but I press on toward the mark ah, of the high calling. He said, leaving things that are behind. Ah, I leave these things that are behind. And I focus on the things that are ahead of me. Oh, Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your grace. In the name of Jesus. Lord, help us, I pray, that we may help us. In the name of Jesus. Help us, our Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. God be with you. Be blessed. In Jesus' name. Till you meet again. Jesus' name.